Hey everybody, Brian Tro coming to you from Mossy Creek Fly Fishing with your fly fishing forecast. The date for today is Monday the 22nd of May. So our droughty conditions continue a little bit. We had a little bit of rain, a little sprinkle come through on Saturday. Some parts of the state got a little bit more uh, than others, but it didn't amount to a whole lot here. Um, water levels continue to slowly drop. Uh, the good news is we've got beautiful weather for the next five days. Um, and we've got seasonably cool weather. So highs of 68, 69, 70, um, and lows in the 40s. Uh, this morning it was 41 degrees at my house. So, and, it, and we're gonna have a lot of nights like that. Uh, winds out of the east and uh, northeast for the next few days. So uh, a little bit on the cool side, which is fine. Um, there's a lot of bugs out there hatching, um, as, as we talked about in the last couple of weeks. So let's, let's kind of make our way through them. If you're brook trout fishing, there's tons of food, water temp temperatures are perfect. Um, you're just gonna need to be stealthier. Uh, longer leaders, it's okay. A lot of people like to fish short leaders for brook trout. They feel like, oh, my rod's seven feet, and so I need this uh, short seven and a half foot leader because I don't like my, my loop connection getting caught in the tip top and all that stuff. Well, well, don't worry about that stuff. Um, first of all, you can loop your fly line back around your reel and have it hook on your guide component further up so you're not always pulling it in and out of there. But you're gonna have to go to longer leaders, um, especially as these fish get spooky. So um, lengthen it up a little bit. It's, it's tough to go too, too fine if you're fishing with really big bugs, so that's a challenge. So like, if, for example, in low water spooky conditions, if you've got uh, big flies like drakes hatching and you're trying to put on a 6X tippet because you don't wanna spook the fish, um, it's not going to turn that fly. It's going to it's going to helicopter and spin a little bit So depending on what you're fishing with if you're going with a big fly uh, To imitate some of the big bugs that are hatching right now our March Browns and our Drakes um, You may have to go a little bit thicker. All right, and hopefully they just get so excited about that big meal um, That they are not paying attention to your thicker leader. All right. These are real problems really really big time problems All right to have uh, as far as the, the bugs that are left um, some of our Cahills and some of our Hendrickson's and stuff are petering out. We're on the back end of those. Uh, still plenty of caddis flies around. Uh, things that uh, we're kind of at peak right now are those March Browns. They are everywhere. Uh, some bugs that are starting to ramp up big time would be the Drakes, okay? Um, and they're going to just do, get bigger and better throughout the next couple of weeks. Lots of fun to fish those. And then you're going to start also seeing some of our yellow sallies up in the mountains, that little yellow stone fly. That'll be a really important bug as we lose our mayflies. The yellow sallies kind of hang out through the month of June, which is really nice. So yellow is an important color. Sulfurs are yellow. A lot of our drakes are yellow, yellow drakes. And then the yellow stone fly. So a yellow PMX does a great job um, if you want to go big. Yellow Humpy does really well. Your straight up sulfur does really well. Um, these are all good flies, high dose flies, easy to see. All right, so sneak around, put on your camo, get down a little low, uh, target some overcast weather, things like that. Um, it looks like there'll be some showers coming in by this weekend too. So that can really help you out if you're heading up into the mountains with a little bit of cover, a little drizzle maybe. All right, uh, heading down, heading downhill. The delayed harvest and our freestone streams um, are all fishing pretty well. Same deal there, getting a little bit lower. Target your riffles, target your deeper pools. Um, places like the Peddler delayed harvest just got some extra fish. The, you can go fish Back Creek delayed harvest, North River delayed harvest, Passage Creek delayed harvest. Go enjoy these streams right now while, they, uh, while they're still catch and release only, okay? Um, they're a lot of fun to fish. Some of these are a little bit closer to the urban areas, like Passage Creek is up near Front Royal. So for those of you that live in Northern Virginia, if you only have you know an hour or two of driving that you can do where you can shoot out and you know fish for a few hours, that's going to be a lot closer than driving all the way here to Harrisonburg. Um, they're all fishing well. Some of the fish in there were just put in in the last month, but there are trout that have been in there since the fall. So depending on how long they've, they've been in there acclimating, um, will be uh, determine how tuned into the, the natural bugs that, that, that they are. Um, but if you want to fish a little bit bigger water, get out there with a little bit more space, you know, the, a little more room to cast than um, a lot of our brook trout streams, head to some of these delayed harvest streams uh, before they open up for harvest for the summer and it won't be worth going to um, after that. All right, uh, the spring creeks are fishing quite well. Same story, low water. Um, fish them at low light, fish them early in the morning, late in the evening. 
mornings can be a little bit tough. Like Mossy Creek's been a little bit slow in the mornings because we have such prolific hatches and spinner falls in the evening. The sulfurs and the drakes are a really big meal. And when they're gorging into the night and well into the night, uh, and you get up the next morning and you're out there at you know 6.30 in the morning um, and you're asking them to eat a little trico or something, that can be tough, all right? So if you have the ability with your schedule to hit your windows, uh, try and target those evening hatches and evening spinner falls. Um, middle of the day can be a little bit tough if it's just sunny and the water's clear and the water's low. Not a lot of terrestrials around yet, so they haven't been like foraging on those. We've, we've caught some fish on beetles and, and hoppers and ants. Um, but they certainly aren't just swimming around looking up for them because they're not there in such big numbers yet. Um, they've got fish have got to get fed a certain food with a good regularity before they really, really start to uh, shape their daily habits and patterns around that that particular bug. Okay. Um, the good news is after that bug is gone, they'll they'll kind of respond well to it, even though the natural ones. Um, aren't, aren't there much longer. So uh, once we lose our drakes, okay, uh, that memo doesn't go out overnight, okay? You can still go out and fish some of these spinner falls uh, or spinner fall hours, even if the numbers are dwindling and the fish will still be looking up, all right? So middle of the day, focus on your undercut banks. Not a lot of shade at streams like Mossy. A lot of our meadow streams like Beaver Creek and Mossy Creek, they have limited shade. You wanna save those shady spots for uh, when the sun gets higher and kind of get back there and work uh, with the cover of shade. Um, the, the warm water fisheries, the James and the Shenandoah have been fishing really, really well. Um, if we can get through another, I don't know, like two weeks uh, without any major flooding or anything like that, uh, it'll be safe to say that this year's spawn was probably really successful. We, we've, we've witnessed it ourselves. Low water years are a little bit easier on the fish uh, for as far as spawn than having these huge pulses come down out of the mountains and just kind of wipe things out. So uh, it, even as recently as yesterday, still saw a spot or two with some, with some smaller smallmouth uh, guarding nests. You know, you're 12 and 13 inches. Not a whole lot of them. That's probably first time spawners. Um, they follow the bigger fish into those spots um, to learn where they need to spawn and um, you know get forced to wait until the big guys are are done before they do their thing there's still a few large mouth on nests there's still a few smaller small mouth on nests very few though by and large it's all done okay um, so sunfish are ramping up uh, on the spawn you'll see them all over the place you'll see those nests everywhere and whenever you see that that's usually a good sign that the bass spawn is pretty much wrapped up. You know, there's a, there's a timing that happens there for a reason. One of the number one nest raiders for the largemouth and smallmouth bass are the sunfish, okay? So the bass are sitting there, the males are having to guard their nest, guard their eggs, guard their little fry, okay? And then all of a sudden, they've been there for a couple of weeks, guarding, working, guarding, working, trying to keep these sunfish away. And then the sunfish go and spawn themselves, okay? That provides relief for the bass because that's one of the biggest nest raiders uh, for the, the eggs of the, sun, of the, of the smallmouth. Uh, musky fishing's been really good, all right? Get out there. Uh, if the river gets too clear and too low, it'll get tougher and tougher. Um, I know we all like to think they're just a big, bad machine um, that never spooks, but they do spook. They just don't spook the same way other fish spook. They don't go and tuck underneath a log and hide from you for the rest of the day. Um, they'll follow your fly in clear water, and then when they see the boat, they'll just kind of submarine down and kind of cruise on out. So, you know, getting big eats right there at the boat on things like figure eights and stuff like that, that doesn't happen as much when we have this super clear water. So hopefully we get another shot and get the water levels back up, get that nice greenish color that we like, margarita green. It's pretty awesome. That helps cover you. Um, that, that gets those fish biting a little better. So... All right. Thanks to everybody who came out to Winchester uh, this past weekend. Man, we had an awesome time. Good seeing our customers up there, making some new ones. Got some people touched up on their casts. Got some people casting for the first time. This truck is going to be a ton of fun, and we're going all over the place this summer. Uh, we'll have a full schedule that we put out so that everybody knows kind of when we're coming near you. But I can tell you our next stop on the schedule for sure uh, is in less than three weeks. We're going to be in uh, Lexington. And I believe it's the uh, 11th of June. I'll have to double check that. But uh, we're going to be in Lexington, Virginia, and we're going to be at Devil's Backbone Brewery. 
and it is going to be awesome. So Colby and the guys here will be putting out all the information through social media and through the emails. Um, and we'll have a, a web page that we're building right now for the truck. So heads up to Lexington in three weeks, Richmond in four weeks. Look out for us in Roanoke and look out for us a little bit later in the summer in Tidewater down in Norfolk. All right. All right. Thanks for everybody. And we will see you next week.